So we're gonna start to talk about type now, and we're gonna explore type even more in an upcoming section. And uh, you heard that quote from Bill Kennedy that uh, type is life. And I've also shared that the Go programming language is all about type. It's all about type. And part of that, central to that, is the fact that it's a static programming language. It's static, it's not dynamic. So you're gonna declare variables to be of a certain type. You're gonna say this variable is built to hold a value of this type. And, uh, and when you declare a variable holds a value of a certain type, and just pay attention to the words I'm using here, when I declare a variable to hold a value of a certain type, then uh, that variable can only hold values of that type. And that's a really important phrase. So I'm just gonna take a moment and, and write it down because there's a language which we, with which we talk about this language and knowing that terminology is gonna help you as you learn the language. Because Go suffers no fools. <laughs> and I hear that in my own head, kind of like on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. Dead men tell no tales. I kind of hear that in my head the same way. Go suffers no fools. So it's kind of funny, but knowing the, to me it is, knowing the terminology is going to help you understand the language and understand this idea that Go is all about type. So when we declare a variable is of a certain type, it can only hold values of, of that type. Okay, so just look at those words there. Declaring a variable is of a certain type. It can only hold values of that type. Well, so far, the way we've seen sort of declaring variables and assigning values is like this. We had the short declaration operator, which allows us to just basically assign something to a variable. And the compiler will figure out the type. And then that variable is of that type. It holds values of, of that type. And up here we did var z equals 21. And again, the, ver the compiler figured out the type of the value that was being assigned here. But we could also do this. We could, see, we could be more specific, right? If we want to, we could be more specific because ease of programming is one of the things that the designers of this language wanted to build into this language. Efficient execution, meaning it's performant. Efficient compilation, meaning you don't have to stand around forever waiting for your program to build. And ease of programming, making it easy, baby. So it's the best of all worlds where you're getting the security of a compiler and a static programming language. You're getting fast compilation time so you don't have to stand around. You're getting fast execution so it's performant and it's really able to get a lot done without a lot of you know, hardware extra computers. And then you're also getting ease of programming. So this goes a long ways with the ease of programming, the short declaration operator, and being able just to say, hey, outside of a, outside of a code block, outside of curly braces, if you want something at the package level scope, just being able to say var z equals 21, sweet, done. But you could also be more specific. So you could be more specific. And instead of letting the compiler figure out the type, you could say, hey, this is an int var z int is equal to 21. And so I'm gonna remove this other code right here and get rid of this little example right here. And, uh, and now we're gonna run this. So let me zoom back out, format the code and run it. And you can see 21, so that's beautiful. So if you want, you could also say that a variable, when you're using, uh, when you're using var, you could also say it is of this type. And we're gonna explore all of, the, all of the types we can work with in an upcoming section, and we'll look at each type individually, so we'll get a little bit of familiarity with, with each of the types. But that's, uh, that's using a var z int. And when you do it like this, that totally works. You could also do it like this. You could come down in here, and inside the code block, you could assign the value. So this is gonna work, and I'm gonna run that, and so I'll just get this code and save it and put it over in our course outline right there. Pow, and uh, so that works. And uh, but what I could not do is I could not declare. I'm declaring that variable z is of type int. Declaring it. I'm declaring. Declaring z is of type int. But then I cannot assign a value to z outside of a code block. And if I try to run this, this is not going to run. 
It's going to say non-declaration statement outside of function body. So you can only have declaration statements outside of function body according to the syntax error. That's on line eight. But this will totally work if it's inside of a, a function body, inside a, a curly braces, a code block. So I'm going to format that and run it, and, uh, and that works. So that's just like a little heads up uh, for you. So two terms, two terms that I want you to know is that primitive data types and composite data types. So people sometimes, um, when they get, you know, when you get into programming, there's this whole new language that you have to learn that people are like using, and it's like, what are they talking about? Primitive data types? <laughs> are these from the Stone Ages? You know, data types that are old, that don't work as well anymore. What are primitive data types? And so a uh, wonderful resource, as I'm sure you, you know, is Wikipedia. But I'm going to just search for primitive data type, primitive types programming. So I included that word programming on Wikipedia, wiki. And if I go look at this, it'll tell us that primitive data types in computer science, and let me bring this in, so there we go. Bam, 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 bam. In computer science, primitive data type is either of the following. A basic data type, a uh, basic type is a data type provided by a programming language as a basic building block. Most languages allow more complicated composite types, we'll talk about that in a second, to be cons recursively constructed started from basic types, or, so it's either of the following, a built-in type is a data type for which the programming language provides built-in built -in support. So basic type is a data type provided by a programming language as a basic building block, right? So this is a type, a primitive type is provided by the programming language as a building block for your programs. It's a primitive type. It's provided by the programming language. It's not a type we created. It's not some other type. It's provided by the programming language, a basic building block. And most languages allow more complicated composite types to be constructed from basic types. So you could think of primitive types as basic types, which would be like ints, string, bool. Or you could think of it as a built-in type. Uh, primitive type is a built-in type is a data type for which the programming language provides built-in support, in which case that would also encompass composite types. So basically a primitive, when you hear somebody talk about a primitive data type, it's either provided by the language, but it's not a composite data type, or it's provided by the language and it is a composite data type. A composite data type, so let's just look at that and go here to this Wikipedia. A composite data type is going to allow you to compose together or aggregate together other values of a certain type. So just think about that a second. You got primitive data types, which are provided by the programming language and might not include composite data types, depending upon who you talk to, or sometimes they do, but those are primitive data types provided by the programming language. And then you have composite data types, which is, uh, you know, taking a bunch of basic data types like int, string, bool, and composing them together in some kind of aggregate data structure that holds a whole bunch of values of different types, and, uh, and that's composite. It's a composite of all these other values of this type. So those are two words that confuse people when they first get into programming, primitive data types and composite data types. Don't sweat it too much. Think about primitive data types as just you know, uh, type data types like an int, string, bool that are provided by the programming language. They might even include slice, array, uh, structure, like a struct, right? So, or, you know, if you're from other languages like an object, primitive data types might also include that depending upon who's using the word and how. And a composite data type is a more specific definition, which means that it's a data type that holds other data types, brings them together, allows you to hold them. So here's the definition from Wikipedia of a composite data type. A composite data type or compound data type is any data type which can be constructed in a program using the program lang programming language's primitive data types and other composite types, sometimes called a structure or an aggregate data type, although the latter term may also refer to arrays and lists. The act of constructing a composite type is known as composition. So that's kind of interesting. And when you start learning the Go programming language, you'll see things sometimes about composition. But composition is just constructing, composing together different data types, according to this definition. All right, so those are, uh, those are like a couple of things which are good to know. And uh, we saw that you know the language we use to talk about this language is important. So we declare a variable to be of a certain type, and it can only hold values of that type. That's what a static programming language is. 
and that, you know, you heard my little thing about Go suffer, Suffers No Fools, and we have var, z, int, right, where we could specify the type and assign a value to it. And, uh, and then if you want to just assign after you've declared, like var, z, int, after you've declared, you have to assign that. If you do it later, you have to assign that in a function, in a code block. And then we have uh, these two words which uh, confuse people when they're new to programming, primitive data types and composite data types. So a primitive data type is just a data type that's provided by the program in its most general definition. And so that'd be like a string, a bool, an int. It could also include composite data types, depending upon who you're talking to, because, hey, that's already built in to the programming language. It's built in, so it's a primitive. Or, and composite data types is the other thing we learned about. So composite data type allows you to bring together a whole bunch of values of different types and hold them in one data structure. So you're composing together a bunch of values of different types. That's a composite data type. And, uh, and to do that is called, when you do that, that's called composition. So we're going to learn more about that as we go through the course, but I just want you to be familiar with those words so you know uh, you have a good foundation and you, <laughs> you, don't, you, you understand what we're doing and you don't fall into that trap of being the fool where you're like, I don't quite know what's going on here. I want to give you a good solid foundation so as we get into new stuff and we use new terms, you'll understand, oh, okay, cool. I know what's going on. All right, so that's just a, the, our first little foray, four, four way, four ray. How do you say that? Four ray, four ray, define, four ray. That's our first little four ray into exploring type. Let's see how Google says it. Four a. Four a. 